Hello everyone, welcome back to this video on probability and statistics. In this video, I am going to discuss the central limit theorem. Central limit theorem is a very important theorem which is used in a lot of applications in digital communication as well. It is used in sampling theorem as well. So now if I talk about the central limit theorem, the central limit theorem states that if I have any distribution, so let's suppose if I have three distributions, so the first distribution is a Gaussian distribution and the second distribution is a skewed Gaussian distribution and the third distribution is a random distribution. So I am taking any random distribution to be my third distribution. So this is x, this is pdf, So now these are my three distributions. So the central limit theorem states that if I take the samples from these distribution. So now let's suppose I am taking one sample here, one sample here and if I am taking infinite number of samples. So n is my number of samples and n is very large. So now when the number of samples are very large at that time the distribution of the sample follow a Gaussian distribution. So if I draw the distribution of samples, so if I draw the distribution of first samples, so it would be like this, second would be like this and third would be like this. So this is So on x-axis here I am taking the sample. So from here I am taking the infinite number of samples. I am taking the samples of same sizes and if I plot those samples now, those samples would follow the Gaussian distribution. This is the perfect Gaussian distribution when n tends to infinity. That time I will get the Gaussian distribution. So now as you can see the Gaussian remains Gaussian, the skewed Gaussian becomes perfectly Gaussian and any random signal also. So the noise, the random noise would also follow the Gaussian distribution. So this theorem is very important when we analyze noise in the digital communication system. So now if I need to find out the Gaussian distribution parameters. So if I take the sample space x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus up to xn. So now here I am taking where x the sum of samples. So x1, x2 up to xn are my samples. So now when I take the samples and I sum all of them. So now that time all of them are considered x1, x2 up to xn are considered independent identically distributed random variable. So I hope you can see I, I was taking samples which are independent from each other. I am not taking any samples which are dependent upon each other. So this is the condition that the samples are independent and identically distributed. So now all of them would be having mean which is identical. So now and variance is also identical because these are identically distributed. This is my condition. So this is the only condition to prove central limit theorem. So now if I find out the mean. So mean of Sn would be calculated as mean of x1 plus x2 plus x3 up to xn. So now e is a linear function. So I can write it like this e of x1 plus e of x2 plus e of x3 plus up to e of xn. So now I can write it like this. So now e of x1 represent mu, mu1 because mu all mu's are same so i am simply writing everyone to be mu so now e of sn came out to be n mu 
so now i hope you are clear how i can find out the mu for the sum of random variables so here sum of random variables denote the sample which i have taken from the distribution so now about the variance variance of sn is equal to variance of x1 plus x2 plus up to xn so i can write it like because these are independent and identically distributed i can write it like variance of x1 plus variance of x2 plus variance of xn covariance would be zero covariance of xi xj would always be zero now why it is zero because these are identically distributed sorry these are independent so in the case of independent samples i can say covariance would be zero and variance can be find out using the sum of variance so because these are identically distributed i can say the variance of each of the sample is equal to sigma square so variance of sn came out to be n sigma square now i hope you are clear how i can find out the variance the mean and the distribution of the sum of random variable samples so i have taken some samples i have made the sum of them i found out the mean and the variance so now if i plot them i already told you these follow the perfectly gaussian distribution when n tends to infinity so now i can write down the gaussian distribution as that is the sum of the samples which are taken sn is equal to summation of xi where x represents my sample which is equal to the normal distribution having mean and mu and variance sig and sigma square so now this is my mean and this is my variance so now this was the case when i had the summation of random variables so now if i take the average of these random variables so if i want to plot the average so now here i plotted the summation now if i want to plot the average of these random variables so the average is represented by x bar and the average is equal to so now if i need to find out mean of the average it would be represented like this so now e of x1 because these are identical and independent so every mean would be mu so it is equal to n mu upon mu which is equal to mu so now if i take the variance of this x bar so now variance would be variance of x1 plus x2 plus xn upon n so now variance so this n would come outside i hope you remember the property of the variance so would it would be equal to 1 upon n square variance of x1 plus variance of x2 plus up to variance of xn because these are identically distributed they they'll have same variance sigma square so now it is equal to 1 upon n square into n into sigma square so now variance is equal to sigma square upon n so now i hope you are clear how i can define my random variable so random variable which is now here the average of the sample so x bar is denoted as sum of xi upon n which is following again a normal distribution having mean mean was mu and the variance was sigma square by n 
so now here you can see the variance has reduced so i can see directly variance reduced so now when i take a lot of samples so if i add a lot of samples so now when i add these all samples the variance would reduce so the this is plotted like this so this would be a perfectly gaussian so here if i have a wider variance when i take them all and i apply the central limit theorem after the central limit theorem application the variance would be less so now i hope you can imagine if you are taking samples a large number of samples that time it would follow perfectly gaussian so now i can take an example like if you are measuring the average weight of every person in your class so now if you take the average weight of every person in one class in second class in third class i am taking the average weight of a lot of classes so average weight would come out to be different different so now if i want to measure the single weight of a single student so that would be completely differ differing from the average weight of the class so if i am plotting the single student's weight that would be very random and that would be having wide variance so let's suppose if the average weight is 45 of a class so let's suppose if i measure the weight of a student it came out to be 56 so here the variance is very much but when i take a large number of samples and a large number of classes of the same age students so the average would come out to be 45 only so it comes nearly to 45 so this is the application of central limit theorem i i hope now you can understand its application so so i can say when n tends to infinity when i take infinite number of samples the variance of x x bar which is tending to zero so now you can imagine this with the help of a coin example as well so if i toss a coin and if i take two experiments so in the first toss what would happen head can come in the second toss again head can come in the third toss again head head can come but if i take infinite large number of samples so let's suppose if i conducted the experiment 10000 times so what would happen here the experiment would result in around 5500 head and 4500 tail so now this outcome would be my actually distribution real outcome so now this is approaching my real real outcome so this is approaching the real probability of head and tail which is 1 by 2 so the variance is approaching to zero when i conduct the experiment a large number of times so when x bar is taken and the n is taken to infinity the variance would turn to be zero so i hope you understood everything about central limit theorem if still you have any doubt you can put your doubt in the comment box i hope you like this video if you li like it share it with your friends and also subscribe the channel and push the like button thank you